So quick note about those first two parts of this example that we already did. Here for part A, we decided that we were going to let A R equal negative X. So since we started with a series that we knew converged as long as the absolute value of X was between negative one and one. So R is between negative one and one then we have the same rules apply here. So if negative x is between negative one and one, that's the same as saying that x is between negative one and one. So this second series that we wrote, well, the one we wrote for part a, would have that same interval of convergence as the original power series that we wrote, this one up here. And then notice what happened when we made series B. We multiplied both sides of our equation by x, but still our r is x. So that means we're going to have that same interval, interval of convergence. The rule is r has to be between negative 1 and 1. And we had r equal to, oh, again, r was equal to negative x in the second one as well. So that same interval interval of convergence, negative 1 is less than x, which is less than 1. I mention it because things are about to get a little different and we want to make sure that we can still figure out the interval of convergence for the series we're going to write for part c. So to get my answer for part c, I'm going to go back to this plan I had from the beginning, which is I'm going to look at this function, 1 over 1 minus 2x, and I'm going to compare it to the expression that I know is the sum of an infinite geometric series and I'm going to ask myself what should I let r be so that this little formula up here turns into 1 over 1 minus 2x. Well, it looks like I'm going to still let a equal 1 and I have 1 minus that's supposed to be my r so in this case that tells me that r is going to equal 2x. So my series is going to be 1 plus, to get the next term, I'm going to multiply by 2x. This is going to be 2x to the first plus, I'm going to multiply 2x by 2x again. That's going to give me 2x squared plus 2x cubed plus dot, dot, dot. So I've given the first four terms there. So for practice, I want to write the general term. So this is 2x to the 0, 2x, sorry, 2x to the 0, 2x to the first, 2x to the second, 2x to the third. That's 2x to the n minus 1. So the first term has an exponent 0. So 1 minus 1 will give me 0. The second term has exponent 1. 2 minus 1 gives me the 1. That's my general term. And now I want to notice what the interval of convergence is. The rule is that r has to be between negative 1 and 1. And I know that r is equal to 2x. So I'm going to write the inequality. Negative 1 is less than r. But r is 2x. Which is less than 1. I can solve that inequality for x by dividing everything by 2. And I get negative 1 half is less than x, which is less than 1 half. So this is the first series that we wrote that has a different interval of convergence. And we can figure it out as long as we go back to this rule. The absolute value of r has to be less than 1, which is the same as saying negative 1 is less than r, which is less than 1. And our job is just to isolate the x in the middle. All right, so one more little example here. Again, I'm going to start with this function. I'm going to compare it to this rule that I know, and I'm going to try to figure out what I should let r equal so that I get, so that this expression turns into 1 over x. Well, it looks like still I'm going to let a equal 1. And if a is 1, then I just need my denominators to match. So I need for x to equal 1 minus r. So you could rearrange that for r or you could try to solve it in your head. It works either way. Um, so that gives me that r is 
1 minus x. So if I let r equal 1 minus x and a equal 1, this sum formula is going to turn into 1 over 1 minus 1 minus x and 1 minus 1 minus x is x. Okay, so that was me just making sure I was making the right decision about my r. Now I have to actually write the series. Well, the series is going to have a first term of 1 plus, I'm supposed to multiply by r to get the second term. So my second term is going to be 1 times 1 minus x plus, I'm supposed to keep multiplying by that same r to get every next term. So this is going to be, whoops, plus 1 minus x squared plus 1 minus x cubed plus 1 minus x to the fourth. So I ran out of room there. So thank you for your patience. I'm going to write down here that I would really be plus dot 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 plus. The general term is going to be 1 minus x to the n minus 1 power. Uh, and then the interval of convergence. So the rule is that r has to be between negative 1 and 1. So r is what I decided my r was going to be. r is 1 minus x. So 1 minus x has to be between negative 1 and positive 1. I'm going to try to get x by itself by subtracting 1 which gives me negative 2 is less than negative x, which is less than 0. I really wanted 0 by himself in the middle. So that tells me I'm going to have to multiply everything through by negative 1. When I do that, I'm going to have to flip all my inequalities around. So I'm going to get positive 2 is greater than x, which is greater than 0, or equivalent, just as good, 0 is less than x, which is less than 2. So this series converges if x is between 0 and positive 2. All right, so check this one out. In example b back there, we had one power series that we got in example a, like part a, and then we noticed that the function we were trying to make in part b was the same as the function in part a, but just multiplied by x. So we just multiplied both sides of our equation by x and got a new function and a new power series. Well, that thing that you've been doing ever since you started learning algebra, which is doing to one side of the equation what you do to the other side, it works here too. And now we know about two powerful new operators. We can make a new power series using differentiation and even integration. So check out this next example. If I know that 1 over 1 minus x is this power series that I love, which is 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, can I find a new power series for 1 over 1 minus x squared? Well, if I notice that the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x is 1 over 1 minus x squared, and you can see here there's sort of a little walkthrough of why that is, that tells me that what I want is a power series for the derivative of the function I'm starting with. So that tells me that I can just take the derivative of every term of the power series and make a new power series. So look at this equation. 1 over 1 minus x equals 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed. Imagine taking the derivative of both sides of that equation. So the derivative of the left-hand side is equal to the derivative of the right-hand side. Well, the derivative of the right-hand side is, they left off the 0, but notice that the derivative of 1 is 0, plus the derivative of x is 1, plus the derivative of x squared is 2x, plus the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, and you can see the pattern. So we can make a new power series from an old power series by differentiating each term. And it turns out we can even do the same thing by integrating both sides of the equation. So here I'm going to start with the same power series I've come to love, 
Oh, wait, no. This is, a, this is a slightly different one. This is the one from example, part A, in that last example. So if I know that 1 over 1 plus x is 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed. Here, r is, oops, this was r was equal to negative x. I'm multiplying by negative x each time. Can I find the power series for natural log of 1 plus x? Well, if in my mind I can recognize that an antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus x is natural log of 1 plus x, then yes, I'm going to use integration to find my new power series. So my recommendation here is you start with a variable change because we're going to integrate with x limits. So it's like the fundamental theorem of calculus. If you want to undo an integral by differentiating, that upper limit has to be the variable x. So I'm going to start with the power series I started with, but I'm just going to change all the x's to t's to make this next part a little bit easier. All right, so check this out. I'm going to integrate both sides of this equation, both sides of this equation with respect to x, like so from 0 to x. So this guy, I know that's the natural log of 1 plus t evaluated from 0 to x. And over here, I have something similar. I'm going to need an antiderivative, essentially, for my power series. I'm going to evaluate that from 0 to x. Fortunately, when I evaluate it at 0, it's going to be easy. So on the left-hand side, that's the natural log of 1 plus x minus the natural log of 1. Natural log of 1 is just 0. That's how I end up with the natural log of 1 plus x on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, I'm just going to integrate. Well, I've integrated term by term, essentially, here to get this antiderivative. And I'm going to evaluate this antiderivative from 0 to x. So that's this crazy-looking polynomial with x's plugged in for t's minus that same polynomial with zeros plugged in. Notice when the zeros get plugged in, this whole antiderivative evaluates to 0. So I can get my final answer, which is the natural log of 1 plus x is x minus 1 half x to the second plus 1 third x to the third minus 1 fourth x to the fourth plus 1 fifth x to the fifth, etc.